Hello, welcome back to the studio. Today we're making watercolor paint again, and you don't get to see my face because I'm super tired after a weekend trip to Toronto, and I didn't feel like getting dressed or doing makeup or any of that stuff. If you're new here, my name is Lee Angold. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator, and I share illustration tips and techniques on this channel. If that's something you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. So next, I'm going to show the materials that I'm going to use. So uh, the first thing that's different from the last time I made paint is the pigment. Today I'll be using a nickel azo pigment. Specifically today I'm using nickel azo yellow, which is uh, probably my most used pigment on my watercolor palette. Uh, it's a very, very transparent uh, middle yellow pigment. I can get this paint easily from a number of different commercial brands, but I wanted to try it because it's very similar to this Nickel Azo Dark PG10, which is a discontinued pigment that I got my hands on through Gera Pigments. Um, that's a green pigment, which is also very transparent. It's sort of a green gold, which I'm really excited to try. In my next video, in a couple of days, you'll see how that went. Um, but today I am mulling Nickel Azo Yellow PY150. Now, because I'm using a synthetic organic pigment with very small particle sizes, it was suggested that I should use a wetting agent. That's a compound that reduces the surface tension of the water and allows the water to mix better with the pigments. Um, the top option in commercial brands is this ox gall, which comes from the gallbladder of an ox. Um, if that's something that you're concerned about, synthetic options do exist, uh, but I've got the original stuff. Now the other option that was suggested as a wetting agent, um, but it's not really, is alcohol. Um, so you can get any kind of alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol will work fine, or anything from your liquor cabinet. I've got some in this little... I've got some alcohol in this little squeeze bottle. Um, the idea with the alcohol is actually it evaporates out while you're mulling. Um, and certainly if you're going to put it in a pan, it all comes out. So uh, you won't be including alcohol in your final product. I also use the alcohol to dissolve some clove oil as a preservative and also I really like the scent and I think it helps with dispersion a tiny bit as well. One of my favorite indie brands, Eventually Everything Mixes, uses uh, quite a bit of clove oil in their watercolors and I really enjoyed that so I decided to add a couple of drops of clove oil into the alcohol that I'm mixing um, and see how that goes. Also, don't forget my safety gear, which I'll put on now. This next little bit of footage is slightly sped up, but then I've also got some real-time mulling footage coming up. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say here, so I'm going to put on some music uh, and let you watch me make some paint. Uh, so I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye for now. See you soon.
Around this point, I thought that I had not included enough pigment, so I decided to add just a little bit more. Um, later on, I think I discovered that actually as the pigment broke down, um, I did need some more binder, so there's obviously some adjustment. Oops, I forgot to put honey in my original mix. Time to fix that.
this last little bit of footage I've had at uh, real time speed so you could see what this process actually looks like, but I don't want to keep you here all day. So now I'm going to speed this up just a little so that we can get through this mulling. Um, as with all synthetic organics, uh, Nicolazzo Yellow took a fair bit of time and uh, later on, once you see the swatches, you'll see that I actually could have mulled it even longer. Uh, so I'll see you again at the end of the video. For now, I'm just going to put some music back on. see in this mulling process that as I mull the paint starts to look very different. In the beginning it was very watery and um, the pigment was suspended but it was quite dark and grainy. Now it's really smooth and buttery. The mass tone is a little bit lighter but the whole paint structure is more even and smooth. For such a fine pigment, I should be able to get it completely smooth with no grittiness whatsoever. Now, of course, that's going to be very difficult um, mulling by hand on a small slab. Uh, but I'm doing my best here. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and in real time, this has now been about just over a half hour of mulling. Um, and I'm just about ready to start putting this up into pans. I'm just putting a little bit of extra alcohol to get all the edges reincorporated, and then you'll see me panning up very shortly. As I wrap up this last little bit of mulling, I have a quick question for you. I'm mulling Nickel Azo Yellow, which is my f most frequently used watercolor pigment and definitely uh, the one paint that I can't live without. But to be honest, I would never consider any kind of yellow my favorite color. I generally don't tend to reach for yellows at all in clothing or decor or anything. Um, so I'm kind of curious, do you have a favorite paint that's not your favorite color, let me know in the comments below. Also, it would really help the channel if you enjoyed this content, if you could hit like below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. In a couple of days, I'll be releasing the second part of this mulling video where I mull Nickel Azo Dark, that's a discontinued, no longer manufactured green Nickel Azo compound, um, which I was super excited to get my hands on because green is my favorite color.
So here you'll see I started um, getting ready to put this paint in a pan, but then I remembered that I hadn't swatched yet and that I should get a proper swatch of my finished paint before I moved on to panning. So here I am, you can't really see what I'm doing too clearly, but I'll show you what that looks like. And don't worry, there will be a better swatch of my finished paint at the very end. Um, and now I'm loading up this pan and I always find it very awkward to load from my mulling slab into a pan. So if any of you have any advice about a better way to do this, I'm all ears. So mulling this paint was a lot of hard work. It was about 45 minutes of mulling plus all the prep. So I'll admit I did something completely ridiculous. I usually try to be low waste, but I actually, not only did I buy myself a bubble tea in plastic, I actually had it ordered in so that it would arrive right when I finished. And now I'm gonna go enjoy my bubble tea while I show you these finished swatches. In a moment, I'll throw up a scan of my final watercolor swatch of this paint I just made. As always, yellows don't scan perfectly, uh, but you can see that I did get a nice clear yellow paint with only a little bit of texture. Um, from what I've learned from this mulling experience, I actually know how to avoid that, but I'll discuss that more in my next video. Bye for now.